Good morning, everybody. Happy oh. Monday. This is our weekly preview. Uh, I am Lindsay Funtick, your coordinator of volunteer ministries, and I have a special guest with me this morning. Want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Tom Snyder. Uh, I do visitation for First United Methodist Church and Christ United Methodist Church. And a few years ago, I was named Pastor Emeritus because I served here and there. And uh, when our youngest son asked my wife what that meant, Kitty replied, it means he's old. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm, I'm the old guy here. Yeah. The, our, you are our wise sage elder. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, I like that. It's all the wording. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as you guys know, our Monday preview, our weekly preview, happens on Mondays where we just kind of give a little bit of an overview of what is happening throughout the week. So here goes nothing. Um, first, tell us about what's happening tonight, Tom. Well, uh, because we're in kind of an in-between period, there's no Bible study tonight. And that will resume on October 5th, which is just next Monday. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's insane that October is next week. I know. Oh my gosh. Fall equinox today. Oh, it's happy tomorrow. fall. That's right. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> oh, my favorite time of year. Um, so for, and Alan will pick that up with a study in James. Uh, and then Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, we kind of have our regular programming. So on Tuesday, Pastor Laura will continue to give us um, our, our study in Job at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, and then Wednesday, we have our prayer respite from 11 to 12 in the sanctuary. So you are all more than welcome to come and join. I'm always in there tucked in the back corner praying over the space. And then we have our last conversations on race this week, which that has just been really, really good, uh, challenging in a lot of good ways. Uh, so I've been really grateful for that conversation. Mm -hmm. And we'll wrap that up. And then celebrate recovery at 6.30 on Wednesday. Yeah, so that's Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Okay. Um, Thursday, because we're kind of an in, in between transition week here, uh, there's no revelation study with Alan tonight, and that will resume uh, next week. Mm -hmm. So, he'll, he'll be, Alan's, uh, he was on vacation last week and he's on a study this week. And uh, Lindsay just reminded me he always goes to the College of William and Mary. and. Uh, we were there last December with friends. We oh, had not nice. been there for many, many years. And um, it's a wonderful historical site. And oh, uh, knowing Alan, he's probably reading 15 or 20 books this week. I was so. going to say, he's probably well <laughs> immersed in words. Right. So rest well, Pastor. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and just as a, oh, we're looking ahead to Sunday. Mm -hmm. So Tom, tell us about your sermon for this week. Tom okay. is filling our pulpit. Well, at this, at this point, uh, the sermon is still a work in progress, but one of the ways that a service is crafted, and I really appreciate the fact that uh, Alan has uh, continued the tradition of uh, preaching from the lectionary here. And uh, lectionary preaching has been important to me for the last 40 years. And uh, so the lessons for this week are from Exodus, where the people of Israel get impatient as usual, <laughs> and uh, they're thirsty, so Moses strikes the rock at Meribah and water comes forth. And uh, it's about, I, I would say if I had to do a one word summary of what the sermon is about, it's about choice and choices mm -hmm. and how we mm -hmm. make them and our motivation behind them. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only God's, uh, the people of Israel's choice to complain, but God's choice to give them what they want. Mm -hmm. God, God does not let, leave God's people bereft in any situation. Yeah. And they weren't always the most pleasant people to deal with <laughs> on the <laughs> Sinai journey. Sure. And the uh, gospel lesson, and in the lectionary, generally the Old Testament and the gospel complement each other, and the Psalter also complements those lessons. That's kind of how that works. Alan's been doing a series out of Romans, mm -hmm. and that's the epistle lessons. So those are kind of the choices of what you can do with those different appointed lessons. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the gospel lesson is Jesus' parable about the man with two sons, and he asks him to go out and work in the field, and one says, forget it, Dad. 
I'm not going to do that. Well, then he changes his mind and he does. And the second one is a guy that says, oh, sure, dad, I'll do it. But then he doesn't. You know, they both made choices. And Jesus asks, <laughs> you know, he's asking us this all the time, who did the will of the father? Mm -hmm. And uh, so to, to compliment that, uh, Sue Gregg and um, Sue Gregg and I came on the staff here in the same year, 1973. So we've been friends for 47 years. That's amazing. Uh, 47 years this month. Sue came hey, in September happy anniversary. of 1973, and I came in July that year. Mm. And working with Sue is always a treat. She's such an artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, so last week, I sent her some hymn choices. And one of the hymns that I sent is not was left out of the 1989 hymnal. So many of you are old as I am, so you remember the 1964 hymnal, the hymn, Once to Every Man and Nation, Comes the Moment to Decide. Well, that was left out of the 1989 one because they thought it was too individualistic, but it's a great poem by the 19th century poet James Russell Lowell. Mm -hmm. And in that is the wonderful phrase, new occasions teach new duties. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good word. Um, that, that's one of my favorite quotes of all time. New occasions teach new duties. And when we get a little farther, I want to talk about that. Oh, sure. So I send Sue the scriptures and hymn choices. And then she and the music team craft the rest of the music to go with that. That's why it's always such a pleasure to be involved in worship here. Because I think the scriptures, the hymns, the music... Uh, and, and I'm taking Psalm 78, which is the Psalter for today, and crafting it into a call to worship mm. and opening prayer. And it's about remembering what God has done for us in history. Mm. That's a great psalm about why it's important for us to always know our history as the people of God. Mm. So I, you know, that's a real long answer to your I question. I love it, though. But it all that, ties together. It's, we, we weave and craft a service together. Mm. So when we leave... And we're called out into the world to make choices on behalf of our way of Jesus. Mm. We, we've had some information and inspiration to do that. Yeah, amen. And I love that it's collaborative. Yeah. That you see Sue's gifts, you see your gifts, mm -hmm. and it all kind of weaves mm -hmm. together into something that is rich and yeah. good. So. That's, what, that's what we were praying for. Yeah, amen. Thanks for sharing. Uh, also mm -hmm. on Sunday, I mentioned this yesterday, but next week is our prayer walk. So this Sunday at 2.30, we are going to be meeting here at the lobby. For anybody who wants to come and join us as we pray over our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't walk, don't want to walk, you're welcome to pray in our chapel as well. Um, but it's just really always a sweet time. Uh, the Lord always speaks some really cool things. And I, through doing this, I really kind of um, learned to appreciate a new, the Lord, like, a heart for prayer and how that pleases the mm -hmm. Lord, how he desires to communicate with us. And he has awesome plans for our community, for our church, and just kind of tapping into that every month has been really cool. Um, also, keep an eye on your email this week for our outreach survey to kind of brainstorm together about what kind of ministry we want to be doing as a family and how we can all kind of take ownership of that together. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, and I'm also really excited, again, reminder, October 10th, Volunteer Leadership Retreat. Um, we are going to be meeting from 9 to 4, and it will be a day full of um, reflection and dreaming ahead and planning together, just some leadership training. Uh, I think it's always nice to be refreshed together, and especially in times of COVID, or at times of pandemic, which mm -hmm. is unprecedented. Um, it gives us a chance to connect, even if our ministries aren't up and running as they once were. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really excited about that and excited to spend that day with you. Uh, so please RSVP to that by October 5th. There is a uh, Google Forms link I sent last week via email, but if you can't, if you can't respond via email, uh, just give me a call, talk to me at church. I'll be happy to write down your RSVP one way or another. Good. So, Tom, what is on your mind today? Well, I mentioned the poem. Um, when I was in college at Ohio Wesleyan back in the Middle Ages, I, I used to walk by the middle school in Delaware, Ohio, and they had two quotes from that poem in plaques on the outside wall. They were engraved in stone. 
And the first one was new occasions teach new duties. And the second one is the next line from that poem. It said, time makes ancient good uncouth. Now, usually when we think about uncouth, we think of somebody that's had a, you know, socially not with it. Adept. <laughs> that, that's the word yeah. I was looking for. <laughs> but uncouth, it, it just, it means it doesn't work anymore. It's, it's uncouth, it doesn't belong. And so in this poem that James Russell Lowell wrote, he was writing in the late 19th century, which was in a time of enormous social change, post-Civil War, uh, the rise of the middle class in America, the, the Industrial Revolution was coming into full force by the end of the 19th century. Um, the idea of progress was taking root in American thought. So that poem was very timely, but even though it was written probably now 150 years ago, new occasions teach new duties. And one of the things, um, you know, I was ordained 50 years ago. I just went to my 50th seminary reunion on Wednesday, virtually, of course. <laughs> sure. And uh, <laughs> a friend of mine calls that the geezer fest. <laughs> <laughs> Again, sage elders. <laughs> <laughs> and. and um, one of the things that the pandemic has taught me, and I think it's never too late to learn, is we cannot go back looking for what we thought was normal. Mm. We, yeah. we cannot go back to what we did before. Now we can do some of the things we did before, mm -hmm. but we can't drop the things that we've been forced to do to keep the church being the church. Mm -hmm. You know, we, every, every church, no matter, and, and I'll tell you, folks, uh, it, it first, at First Church and Christ Church here in town, those are the two churches I'm familiar with. Everybody's done a yeoman's job, <laughs> you know, making the church present digitally, but we cannot retreat from that. Mm -hmm. we, we can't say, okay, we're all back in church, let's forget all the visual stuff. Mm -hmm. but we, we cannot do that anymore because that's how our culture functions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not very adept at all the technological <laughs> stuff myself. Anyway, I can attest to that. <laughs> but I know that we cannot go back to not doing those things which we've been called to do by this pandemic. And, yeah. you know, in one way it's been a, I mean, it's terrible to say this. Uh, I, I don't want to call it a gift. Mm. But it's been something that's made us do those things which we thought might be a good idea someday. Mm -hmm. so, you know, let's get around it, televising the service. Yeah. Well, we have to do it. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that's done is it's made the church think creatively about how do we maintain a presence in people's lives, in the community. Um, it's, uh, you'll be you'd be surprised. I, I think if you checked out to see who was watching your service on Sunday, there are people from all over the United States and probably the world mm -hmm. that at one time or another tuned in on the worship service from 220 Sandusky Street. Mm -hmm. And you know we cannot go back. Yeah, and that's such a gift. Yeah. Like yeah. the technology has caused the world to shrink and mm -hmm. reach further. And I love love love. That's just such a, a, a wise insight, Tom. And I think that um, while, like you said, it's not, gift might not, the way that the Lord can take something so hard yeah. and so challenging and use it as a seed for growth in his body is just, this pandemic and all of its struggles has made me fall in love with Jesus and love the church more and more as we see a right. rise to the occasion. You know, and I think if anything, you know, we used to come to church. Mm -hmm. Now church comes to us. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I love that. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm glad it's not a two-way visual thing sometimes <laughs> because of what I look like on Sunday morning. When <laughs> Come as you are. <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Tom. Especially that visual. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, as we close out for our weekly preview, would you mind closing us in prayer? I, I would be glad to. Thank you. you. Pray with me. God, we thank you that new occasions do teach new duties. And the things that we've done before may not always work, always. So thank you for even in the midst of this terrible pandemic, and we remember all the people who have suffered and died and 
persons who have ministered to those with the COVID. We remember everybody that's been touched by it in some way. But we also thank you that out of that pain and out of that grief, you uh, continue to work in us and through us to be faithful ministers of Jesus Christ. And if that's on the computer screen or the telephone or the television, however the word is brought forth, prayer walks, studies, visual encounters, and God bless us one more Zoom meeting. <laughs> you are present and we trust that and we thank you for that. And we give ourselves to you again this week and in all days. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Everybody, have a great week. We will see you all very soon. Be blessed.